Hello and welcome to OpenCV Basics. This is the third video in our DFT series. In this video, we're going to try to uh, basically recenter our current DFT output so that the low frequency information is in the center and the high frequency information is in the corners instead. What's important to note is that what we're doing here is specifically meant for visualization purposes only. You do not want to be uh, applying these transforms to the original DFT object, especially if you plan on doing any processing on it or you plan on inverting it for any reason. All right. So once again, when we took the log and we normalized things, we added one to them and so forth and so on. And when we recenter things in just a minute, you do not want to be using this image, the data associated with this when you're doing your processing. This is just so us human beings can actually see what's going on. That's why we went to pains and show DFT to make sure we store this information in a different matrix and not store it back in the original one uh, that we were working with. Okay, so let's go ahead and stop this and create a new function. This one's going to be called void recenter DFT. In recenter DFT, we're going to pass in a mat object by reference and we're going to call it source. This is a relatively simple process. It, all it requires is that we figure out what the dimensions of our images are, um, have them so we find the center point. We're going to create four mat objects for each quadrant, quadrant one, two, three, and four. And then we're basically going to shuffle those quadrants around. One is going to become four, and two is going to become three. And I'll put up a little pictorial display of what I mean over to the side right now. So let's start by declaring two integer values. We're going to do int center x is going to be equal to the source dot columns divided by two. We want int center y is going to be source dot rows divided by two. So those are the center points of our image. Okay, that's where we're going to split our image into quadrants. Now we're going to define our two quadrants. So mat quadrant one is going to be our source matrix data, and it's going to be only a portion of that. We're only going to allocate, or this mat object is only going to have access to a quadrant of that information. Now, images start with 0, 0 in the upper left-hand corner, so we need to do 0, 0, and then we're going to go to center x, and then center y. Now we're going to do this again for a few more. We're going to actually do this four times, so we want quadrant 1, 2, 3, 3, and 4. This one, quadrant two, is just to the, to the right, so we want to offset this in the x by center x. That's where it begins. Down here in uh, quadrant three, we are at zero in the x, but we are displaced down by center y. And for this last one, we're displaced center x, and we're displaced center y, okay? Now that we have our four quadrants, it's just about us shuffling them around. So let's define a temporary variable to hold our mat information while we're doing these swaps. Mat, swap mat. We're going to do q1.copy2. We're going to copy the data, the pixel information, from q1 to swap mat. So it's going to store that information. This is not a reference to that location. This is not a pointer. We're literally copying those values over, okay? So we don't have to worry about overriding anything. Next up is Quadrant four dot copy two. So we're copying that information now from quadrant four's section to quadrant one. We're just shuffling things about. Then of course we're going to do swap mat dot copy two. We're going to copy this back to quadrant one. So hopefully that, that makes perfect sense. We're going to do this in same operation now, but instead of doing it for one and four, it's going to be two and three. So copy to swap mat then Q3 copies to Q2, and then of course swap mat copies to Q3. All right, perfect. That's all we need to recenter the DFT. So let's call this inside of show DFT right before I am show. Recenter DFT, we're gonna to pass to it DFT magnitude. So it's passed by reference, so that mat object's gonna come in here it's going to be recentered, come back out, and we're going to visualize the results. Let's go ahead and pr press local window debugger. Yes, please build. Uh oh, so it looks like I made a quick mistake. Let's go and fix that. What you'll notice is that quadrant one and four are definitely not flipped, but quadrants two and three are perfect. So let's check our code really quick. 
Um, quadrant one, copy to swap mat. Quadrant four, copy to quadrant one. Swap mat, copy to quad, nope, here we go. We're copying to quadrant one twice. This should be quadrant four. Save that, run, yes. And there we are. There is our DFT, visualized in a way that's probably a lot more familiar to you, especially if you're learning about the DFT. Of course, our low frequency information, the highest intensity information, that is with the highest amplitude is in the center. And as we move out to the corners, our high frequency information. All right, hopefully that was easy enough, recentering the DFT. Hope you enjoyed it. In the next video, we're going to discuss inverting the DFT, getting our original image back from what you see here. Thank you. Bye.